Let me get this straight. An 85 inch flagship TV with out of this world specs for $3,300? I mean, really? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and today we're gonna unbox, set up and get first impressions of the Vizio 85 inch P-Series Quantum X. The model number for that would be P85QX dash J01. This is a TV that was actually announced some time ago, but didn't start shipping and hitting store shelves until just a few weeks ago. We've got one of the few review samples out there, so let's dig in. Before I open up the box and start screwing, a quick word to some of our YouTube fans out there who might be wondering, what about that Samsung S95B OLED and the LG G2 OLED? Where are those reviews? Well, couple things on that. First of all, this TV arrived some five weeks ago or something like that, and I have been extremely busy. So I'm a little late to the game and I need to get to this TV. The other reason, not as sexy, is that those TVs have not arrived here yet. They're simply not going out to reviewers from the manufacturers. The reviews that you see are from folks who have purchased those TVs and more power to them. We don't do that here. We actually wait for review samples from the manufacturer and honestly starting to rethink that whole strategy right now. But rest assured those reviews are coming and I'm very excited to get to them, especially with a lot of the drama that is swirling around some of these TVs. So stay tuned, they are coming soon. All right, if you haven't already, liked, subscribe, click those buttons, click that bell. And hey, quick shout out to the Zenger Superbase Pro 2000 for sponsoring this video. A Little bit more on that in a moment. Let's get into this TV. I would hope this goes without saying, but if you're setting up a TV this big, you'll need an extra set of hands. The box is a bit unwieldy. You'll want help setting it face down. Carefully now, it's a bezel-free TV after all. Then your friend can watch you install the feet, which is super simple, and then step in with some extra muscle to help get all 100 pounds or so up on your wall or media stand, which will be much appreciated, I'm sure. The back of the TV is standard fare. You've got four HDMI inputs, two of which are labeled 4K 120, and those are separate from the eARC port, and that has me encouraged that either this TV has four HDMI 2.1 ports or it has ensured that you get two HDMI 2.1 ports separated from the eARC port, either of which is a better scenario than sharing one of just two 4K 120 ports with the eARC port. I'll verify with Vizio the state of all four ports and report back on the full review of this TV. Down toward the bottom, you'll find a pair of rear firing speakers, which don't inspire a ton of confidence that this will be a hi-fi sounding TV. Then flipping the TV around, we can see that yes, indeed, the front face of the TV is free of bezels. Just note, there is a black matrix bordering the screen that will not be filled with picture info. So it's like having a border of sorts. I love that the Vizio logo is super tiny and buried in the far corner and and not illuminated. That's how it comes out of the box. And that's a considerate move on Vizio's part, if you ask me. The remote is standard fare, medium in size with a modicum of buttons, some of them dedicated to services most folks don't use. Yes, I'm looking at you, Tubi TV. Sorry. You do get a settings button and a voice control button as well as volume up and down keys, and that's pretty much all you need. So not flashy, but functional. Time to take a quick break to thank our sponsor for this video, the Zenger Superbase Pro 2000. This is the portable power station we need right now. Gas prices are super high, and in many situations, gas power generators are now flat out banned. The Zenger Superbase Pro 2000 is a beast of a power station, yet it's easily portable thanks to its extendable handle and wheels. It's rated at 2000 watts, but its amp up feature supports appliances and power tools that require up to 3000 watts. So power what you want, portable heat portable AC, fridge, power tools, microwave, coffee maker, no problem. It'll even power a washing machine. And that makes it suitable for off-grid RV camping, a commercial work site. I mean, you could power a small rock band PA with this thing. With a standard AC connection, you can charge it up to 80% in one hour. And if you're going off-grid, optional solar panels mean you'll never run out of juice. With six AC, four USB-C, three DC, and one car output, 
The Zenger Superbase Pro 2000 has your power needs totally covered. I took the Superbase Pro 2000 on a four day off-grid adventure and never once touched my RV's batteries or gas generator and I ran my air conditioner. I'm here to tell you this thing is legit. Save $400 now with our exclusive discount, just $18.99 when you use the code Digital Trends. Link is down below. Thanks again to the Zenger Superbase Pro 2000. Once you turn the TV on, you'll go through a remarkably easy setup process. It takes a little while for the TV to update once connected to the internet, but Vizio stripped the SmartCast setup down to a very straightforward process, which does include the now standard prompt for signing away your privacy if you want the full personalized recommended content experience. This is me reminding you that if you skip reading the terms and conditions, which I know most of us do, then you waive most of your rights to complain later if you learn your TV is selling your deepest secrets to the dark web. I'm not saying this TV does that, I'm just saying read the fine print or play the hand that's dealt you. Once the basic setup is done, I suggest you pick a picture preset, and if you like eye-searingly staring into the sun bright, well then you don't need to do much because that's how this TV is right out of the box. Maybe I'm being a little over dramatic here because our camera just could not handle the brightness of the bright mode on this TV, but seriously, it is bright. In fact, the bright mode appears brighter than the vivid mode, which is nuts to me, but to its credit, the bright mode has a more neutral color temperature compared to the bluish tint that you get from the vivid mode. At any rate, Vizio doesn't do filmmaker mode or ISF modes on this TV. If you want something resembling accuracy, then choose calibrated or calibrated dark for your picture mode. I'm choosing calibrated dark because it's still plenty bright in SDR for our camera, but I'm not gonna lie, I'd probably enjoy calibrated bright if I was watching sports during the day. Now, at this point, the home screen picture mode is selected. Does that carry over to SDR content in apps? I popped into YouTube and sure enough, calibrated dark was already selected. That's a win in my book. Then I pulled up an HDR video on YouTube to trigger HDR 10 and the TV was in calibrated dark HDR mode. That's another win. Usually you have to select an HDR mode that best matches your SDR selection, but not here. How about Dolby Vision HDR? I pulled up a Dolby Vision title on Netflix and it was already in the calibrated dark version of Dolby Vision. So it appears that when you set the picture preset from the home screen, it maintains similar presets for HDR and Dolby Vision in your apps, which is a huge win for most consumers who might not even know that they need to pick a picture mode for SDR, HDR, and Dolby Vision for apps and HDMI inputs. And on top of that, I'm finding SmartCast to be super snappy and responsive, which is a huge improvement over prior year Vizio TV. So it's entirely possible that I will not have to complain about SmartCast being this TV's undoing in some way, and that makes me very happy indeed. Now, as for first impressions, it appears the TV I have has either a big dirty screen effect issue localized to the upper right hand quadrant. You can see it here for yourself. It's not something you can look past or I guess it could be shipping damage. So I'm not thrilled about the state of this specific panel. However, if the rest of it remains clean for my review period, I should be able to review the TV's performance around that blemish. Speaking of performance, this TV claims a peak brightness of 3000 nits, which is insanely bright. And we've experienced some of that already. And it promises 790 zones of local dimming in this 85 inch model, fewer in smaller sizes, but still well above average across the board. So I'm hoping for really good backlight control, minimized blooming, deep blacks, good shadow detail, and some seriously eye-popping HDR highlights, as well as significantly higher color volume than other TVs that simply can't get as bright. The off-axis performance so far is about what I would expect from an LCD-based TV, which is to say it isn't great, but there's this off-axis improvement setting in the menu I'm curious about, what is it supposed to do and when does it help? Because so far, I don't see it helping that much, but I'll keep an open mind going forward. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to digging deep into this TV because this 85 inch ultra bright monster is coming in under the $3,000 mark on sale already and destined to go lower over time. And that being the case, at 85 inches, it's less expensive than a 65 inch Samsung S95B or even a 55 inch Sony A95K. It's about the same price 
price as a 65 inch LG C2 OLED, that means that the high performance value proposition on this TV could potentially be off the charts if it performs well. You'll definitely want to come back for the full review because this could get interesting. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Has this unboxing piqued your interest in a TV you may have let drop off your radar? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and here's two other videos I think you'll want to watch.